Live right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, hey, Sean, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, this is Sean Dowdle with uh, Gray Days. Super stoked to be talking to you. Um, Likewise, thank you. So for anybody on here who's unaware, I'm sure everybody's aware, but Gray Days was um, pre-Lincoln Park, Chester Bennington, before uh, Lincoln Park was a thing, yes? Yes, and it was the last project Chester was working on before he passed away. Yeah, So, the, but the music for this album um, was actually written even pre-Lincoln Park, wasn't it? The songs were lyrics and vocals. We, we ended up rewriting all of the songs around Chester's vocals uh, uh, post him passing. Okay. Okay. So they were rewritten kind of after the fact. The songs were, yes, the music. Okay. Um, so we are playing one of your songs right now. We're playing Sickness. Um, awesome. Yeah, which is awesome. Thank you. Now the video for the song, we see a young Chester Bennington. Um, how was that for you guys? It was cool. You know, the video we took, not just the lyrical content uh, for that song, you know, the song's about feeling empty and and, yeah. and wanting more and all that stuff. But we also took some real live, real stories from our past and kind of plugged them in um, to kind of create a storyboard. And we picked out a, a, a guy for a young Chester and it was actually kind of cool. Um, it was cool to kind of recreate some of that stuff and and be involved in, in creating a, a piece of content like that that didn't necessarily follow just the lyrics. It kind of gave a little bit of a, of a backstory to the whole, to Chester's life a little bit. Right. It's extremely powerful, I imagine. Thanks. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, now you have another video uh, for one of your other songs, uh, Soul Song, um, where Chester's son, Jamie, directed the music video. And if I'm correct, Jamie is older now than you guys were when this whole thing started. Yeah, so I, I believe when we recorded uh, Soul Song originally, Chester would have been 21 years old. So yes, that sounds about right. Yeah, how was that? I think Jamie's 24 now, so. Right, that's what I saw, yeah. So um, how was that, having him involved in that? It was, it was great, you know, it was an idea we came up with in the middle of recording this record to get Chester's children involved because he never got to record anything with his kids. And I know it was something he would have loved to have done had he, had he lived to be able to do it. So it just kind of hit me one day when we were in the studio. I'm like, you know what? Chester never got to record with his kids. Let's get his kids in here and, and let them sing backing vocals with their dad. I think that's just, it just felt good and sound, sounded like a good idea. So we reached out to all the children really. And uh, when I talked with Talinda, she said, you know, she felt that Tyler, Lily and Lila might have been just a little too young to make that choice. And I totally respected that. And uh, I reached out to Draven. He just was a little apprehensive. I don't think he knew how to intellectually digest it yet. Maybe yeah. maybe maturity wise. I think he was around 15 at the time, maybe 16. And then uh, Jamie was on board right away. He's, he realized, like, look, this is kind of a once in a lifetime thing. I'm not going to be able to do this again. And so he took advantage of it and came in and he sings backing vocals on Soul Song. And it was a great experience. Yeah, that's the mother in me loves everything about that. That's truly amazing. Awesome. Um, so tell me, so I read a story about, um, I don't know if it was a demo or a cassette of some sort where like a hundred of them melted in a car. Do you know, is that not, was that, was that a Chester thing or was that a. I don't know the story you're talking about, but, but feel free to tell and enlighten me. I'd like to yeah. hear it. <laughs> I don't even know the whole story. It was like, there was a demo, um, a demo cassette where um, there was a couple songs on it, I guess. And they were left in a car um, before they were sent out. And like out of uh, 200 of them, over a hundred of them kind of melted. and. It was in Honestly, my. I don't. I don't know that story. It could okay. be true. I, I. I don't know. Uh, you know, we only did one. One cassette demo. Yep. Together, and then the rest we were doing on CDs after that. So. Um, and I bet only early on. Yeah, or that would have been like 1993. It would have been our very first three-song demo. 
but yeah. I don't, I've never heard the, heard anything about any melting or anything like that, but oh, it's amazing. The, uh, <laughs> it's amazing the history that I'm learning about the band that I, apparently I wasn't there for. <laughs> yep. That other people don't know that you're just learning. Hey, you know what? More power to them. If it makes them feel like they're part of it, then, then high five and hugs. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, it was uh, so. I guess it would have been from your 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 band, yours and your friend's band. So I guess from from what I'm reading, so I guess you're another another yeah. thing that other people know that you're not aware of. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't know anything about any melting. I do know that those cassette tapes are quite valuable these days. I've seen some friends have sent me some links to stuff online. I see them going for fifteen hundred, over two thousand dollars for a single cassette tape, and I'm just like mind blown. Yeah, you're like, that, that, hold on to all of them. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I should just reprint them and sell hundreds of them. But no, it's uh, it's kind of cool to see that kind of stuff happening. And I think Chess would laugh at that as well. Oh, I'm sure he is. I have no doubt. Um, So do we have everything from the vault now on a man? No. Is there more? There's more. Yeah, we have enough to do at least one more, if not two more records. And there's some really phenomenal songs that did not make this record. Um, so we will most likely be doing a second record. That just gave me goosebumps. I got to be honest with you. That's amazing. I love that. Awesome. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So plans going forward. So obviously we're kind of in a crazy world right now where we're not allowed to be around other people. Um, do you think once this whole thing comes down, are you guys going to go on tour? Or are we going to get to see you live? Like what's your, what's your plan for that? So I guess it's kind of a multi-staged answer. So, um, the, the first thing is we do not want to replace Chester. So that's not going to happen. If we were to do anything live, there's one of two ways we do it. Um, we would either bring in some guest vocalists to pay tribute to Chester and honor Chester. We would do that. Or we would do some type of a technology forward live show where we brought in some really cool, um, highly tech uh, video screens or, 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 or something to bring um chester on stage with us and maybe in conjunction with uh some guest vocalists we don't know what that looks like but we're entertaining the ideas because we get this question a lot yeah and uh it seems like we're getting a lot of people interested in seeing us do something but i don't want to forget why we started and completed this project in the first place was for our friend chester so we're not going to take that off the table he's got to be involved every step of the way if we do anything yeah well and i'm sure i mean that's what everybody I think you're probably speaking to what everybody would want to hear or see anyway. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, hopefully, um, it's something I've learned through this whole thing is I, I can't please everybody, you know, um, some people, most people love what we're doing, but then occasionally I'll see some negativity. I'm like, you know, not, not, I can't focus on that. I'll focus my energy on the, on the people that like what we're doing and, and just go down that road. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't, you cannot please everybody. I mean, yeah. there's just, there's no way possible. And um, I would think the majority rules. Um, and I think it's an amazing thing what you guys are doing. I'm extremely excited about it. Thank you. You know, the first people we have to please are us. Yes. Um, and if, if the music passed that test where Mace and Kristen and myself are all happy with the music and we think that Chester would have been happy with the music, then we'll put it out and hopefully everybody else likes it at that point. But if it doesn't pass that test, then, then there's no use doing it. Yeah, absolutely. So the reunion, how did that, um, how did that come to be? How did that start? So a lot of people don't realize this, but Chester and I were not only best of friends, we were business partners in a company called club tattoo. And, uh, we went into business together in 2003. Um, we have seven luxury tattoo and piercing studios, we did a couple clothing lines. We did a lot of other stuff besides music. We played in a couple side bands as well. We did okay. a jewelry company. I mean, we literally did a lot of things. So we were discussing one night on the phone, doing another uh, anniversary party for our company called Club Tattoo. We used to do these parties where uh, we would literally draw three, four, five thousand 5,000 people. And Chester and I would get up on stage with some of our friends and just have a huge party. We hadn't done one in several years. So we started talking about doing another anniversary party. And he said, you know, I've been thinking about that. And for the next club tattoo party, I want to put gray days back together. I think it's time. And I said, okay, that's interesting. Cause we had toyed with putting gray days back together a couple other times over the past couple of decades. Sure. And just the timing hadn't worked out for whatever reason. 
So it wasn't like it came out of left field, although um, I was a bit surprised. Um, so when he mentioned, I said, okay, so we kind of worked through the logistics of, of what his commitments were, what my commitments were. And we basically agreed to do, uh, I think it was mid to late um, 2017, mid to third quarter 2017 for our reunion show. Once we started letting know, uh, people know that we were doing this, we started getting calls from booking agents all over the world wanting us to play Paris, wanting us to play uh, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, uh, New York, Miami, L.A., ev literally everywhere around the world. The promoters started calling, making us offers. And Chester, we started having these conversations that revolved around this project, reuniting and reforming. And it kind of evolved into, well, we have these 30 plus songs sitting uh, in our masters, we can go back and start re-recording these things and put out a record. And that way, if we have something to actually sell and do while we're out doing these shows so that fans have something to tangible to get a hold of. Sure, yeah. That's how it started. Um, and then from that point, we kind of chose, I don't know, it was a, we chose three songs we started working on. I would go into the studio and work with the producer and we would go back and forth via email to Chester and he would say, I like this, I don't like that. Let's do this. And then he would play me songs that he had written for the for the record. Um, that And I believe he had written four or five tracks. I got to hear them. And uh, four of them were, I think, were really good. I was getting excited to work on those in the studio with him. And then uh, we kind of came to the conclusion as we're talking on the phone. We're like, you know, we should modernize these things a little bit. They're sounding a little bit dated. You know, they're, they're good songs, but they're sounding like they were done in 1998 or whatever. So we started talking about adding some synths, some maybe some programming, and that idea just kind of evolved. And then, of course, uh, you know, we were supposed to start rehearsals. Um, I don't know, it was like July 23rd, July 24th of uh, 2017. And, of course, he passed away on the 20th, and then the entire project just got stopped dead in its tracks, and we just didn't revisit it. After several months of... Uh, of morning and just kind of trying to figure out what we were going to do. I just woke up one morning with the determination to finish the record. And I told my wife, I told the band and I flew out to meet with Talinda in LA and sat down and had lunch with her and explained what I wanted to do. And she said, look, you're his best friend. I trust you. I know you're going to do this thing, right? Just make sure it doesn't suck. And then we just both kind of <laughs> laughed and I said, I'm not going to make it suck. She's honest. I know, I know it's going to be fine. And and then with that, once I had her blessing, you know, I called Chester's dad and, and mother and, and told them what I wanted to do as well. And they love the idea and they both love me and trust me. And that's how it started. And then I, uh, I connected with a mutual friend named Renee Mata, who uh, really helped me get some producers who helped the band kind of re-approach these songs in a different light. We literally stripped all of the music away from Chester's voice and literally just worked on Chester's vocals for a couple months on the arrangement, making sure his vocals sound amazing. Yeah. And then we literally rewrote every single song around his voice. And I think because of the way we did it, you know, it took us two and a half years to get there, but because of the way we did each individual song was such care and we curated it in such a way to maintain that original integrity of what we were trying to accomplish in Chester's voice. Uh, I think we created a masterpiece and I'm very proud of the record. Yeah, as you should be. And I would imagine that in some ways uh, it was a bit therapeutic even kind of working on this. It didn't start that way, but, you know, after several months of, of listening to him over and over and over again, it became very healing for all of us. It was a cathartic experience. And, you know, in the beginning there were a lot of tears shed. And in the middle, we started finding ourselves laughing and sharing stories and really trying to remember our friend during the whole time we brought a little picture of him and put him on the recording console every time we were in the studio and we could absolutely feel him and feel his presence with us while we were doing all this so it was very special yeah i would imagine now is there any um kind of behind the scenes footage of you guys doing this or is that we did we wanted to make sure that everybody understood the intention of why we did this so we started recording the entire process from day one and uh, we, we put, to put together basically a full documentary. It's a 90-minute documentary called Making Amends. And uh, we'll, re we'll release the whole thing at some point. We've, re we've released little parts of it up to this point, but we literally have a lot more that still have to be released. And it's done. We're just trying to figure out the timing of where and how to do that. But I think people will be really touched when they see the amount of love and um, care that we put into this. 
Yeah, well, and I think that, you know, um, the people who you, you said kind of are hating on it, I feel like maybe that will show them truly that this this is the purest of intentions and nah, those people are 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 miserable human beings in their own in, the, in their everyday life. And honestly, I could care less to try yeah. to change their mind. It's not I'm not on this planet to try to argue with idiots. Um, I would enough. rather try to explain to the people that are actually genuinely curious and genuinely love Chester and love his voice and love the music. And give them kind of a walk in our shoes for a few days. Um, that's more about what the experience is about. I'm not, there's, you know, millions of people at this point that have listened to just the few amount of tracks we release. And there's only a few, a handful of people that don't like it. And I just, I don't have time to waste on those, that few. I'd rather spend my energy the other direction. Agreed. I love that. So tell me with all of this material uh, that you guys have out there, I think you said 30 or so songs. How did you decide what went on this first album? That's a great question. You know, at first we started picking what we thought were the best songs. And then we thought, oh, these have, you know, potential. We started with 17 tracks in total. Um, and then we whittled those down once we started working on those down to 11, because we felt like that group of 11 tracks felt like a record. Right. And then the, uh, the remaining tracks we'll save for the next round. And uh, there's some, like I said, there's some great songs that did not make this record. Yeah. That's uh, it's exciting for sure to know, you know, um, you know, I, uh, the album was, if I remember correctly, um, slated to come out in April and you guys changed the release to June. Um, if I'm correct, due in part to kind of everything that was going in the world, like what went into that? Oh, it was a hundred percent due to what was going on. I mean, like literally we're in the, the middle of hurricane Irene and trying to throw a party. Right. No one's going to show up. I mean, it was a, it was a logistical nightmare. The re Everyone from the record label had to start working from home. The manufacturing plant shut down. The distribution center shut down. It was a nightmare. We're like, this does not feel right. We have to press the pause button. Let's put this thing out when people can actually go out and enjoy it. We're not in a hurry to fail. Let's do this the right way. And we, and it was, a, it was a tough decision, but once we started talking through all of the logistical issues we were having, it was like, it was a no brainer. Look, we can't, this doesn't make sense to do this. Nobody wants to try to throw a celebration in the middle of this garbage we're going through. Right. Absolutely. And that, that was it. Yeah. So that's what this is. It, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of life. It's a celebration of him. It's a celebration of, of you guys as friends and as a family. Absolutely. Absolutely. It gives people a chance to hear Chester in a way that they haven't heard him before. It expands his musical legacy in a different direction than what you know him as just the singer for Lincoln Park. Right. And quite honestly, it gives you uh, a, a, an extended catalog of great songs and great music from one of the best singers we've seen in 20 years. Agreed. And some of the songs, if I'm correct, on this album, um, I know he wrote them, but like they, they have some personal experience behind them. Is that right? Every song has personal experience behind them. Chester and I wrote all the lyrics together, uh, primarily on all the songs, and every single song has a deep emotional experience connected to the lyrical content, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So June 26th is the date. The album is amends, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for the album. I'm excited to see what the future holds uh, for you guys, and I... I really, truly hope that we get the chance to see you live, however that looks. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And we hope you enjoy the album. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Take care. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.